what's up everybody so today I'm going to be teaching you how to color correct in magic bullet looks so first you're gonna want to either get your own footage or if you want to practice with mine uh, you can download this uh, there will be a link in the description to Mediafire where you can just click and uh, then click download uh, because I always hate it when people make like free downloads like really really complicated to get it just drives me nuts uh, alright so yes Download this footage, drag it into After Effects, open a new comp, and then we are going to be clicking Effects and Presets. Last time I clicked this, my computer crashed for some random unexplainable reason, and I had to restart the tutorial. So, yes, type in look, uh, looks, because that is how you spell looks. Locks. Looks. There we go. Okay, drag it on to your thing. Or actually, you know, a better idea. Click here, uh, Control-Alt-Y to make a new adjustment layer. A liar, a new adjustment liar. I can't talk today. And we are going to call this CC for color correction. You could also call it looks, but CC is easier to type, so yeah. Lazy. Um, so click CC, click edit on looks, and that will pull up Magic Bullet Looks right here. And I will teach you the formula for how to do this. Now, as you can tell, uh, actually, let me close that for a second. Uh, this is a bad frame for me to color correct on. Let me pick a more interesting frame, like that one. That that looks like a fun frame. Because I had this more adjusted for inside, the camera adjusted for inside, not outside. So let's pick a, like that. That's pretty good. Alright, so then we're going to click edit. <clears throat> Just because it's a cooler frame to look at. And now we're going to, oh well, actually let me explain how this works. This are, bleh, this are, gee, I cannot talk today, like I was saying. This is uh, meters of light and stuff. And so this is, you know, represents the red channel, green channel, blue channel. And um, so this is actually pretty well balanced out. They're not like, you know, sometimes you'll have one that's way up here and the other ones are down here and stuff like that and saying that it wasn't color corrected well. Uh, Adjust the camera wasn't adjusted well when you were filming. This is a light meter, um, and so zero is pure black and one is pure white. And you don't want this, <laughs> what you see right here. Um, this was too bright when we filmed it, so this is blowing out and it's past pure white. But since you know color doesn't really go past pure white um, or you know completely bright. Uh, it's it's blown out and we can't see any detail, so we lost a little bit of detail there due to my stupidity in filming. This is a uh, boring. We're not going to look at that, and then that is also boring. So uh, let me see. And then memory colors. I think this just gives me a sort of an interesting looking thingy. Yeah, that just looks cool. I don't I don't know how to use it, but whatever. It looks cool. So okay. So click tools, and we're going to drag on exposure right here, and da da da. Here it is. Okay. So we're going to look at this light map thingy. And you're, if you if you uh, if you want it to be very high contrast, then take it down to like seven. If you don't want it to be very high contrast and you just want it to look a little bit better, uh, go with eight. So I'm gonna go with eight because high contrast can usually be kind of weird looking. Um, so I'm gonna click tools again. So also, you can just move your mouse over, mouse over here and it'll pop it up. But uh, see, there we go. But it doesn't always work, so I just click tools. So we're gonna drag on the contrast effect here. And we're going to bring the contrast up until this line gets to 9. Or, you know, whatever the highest point on here gets to 9. If you if you adjusted the camera well uh, when you were filming, then you'll just have, like, one little peak. And once that touches 9, you stop. So I'm going to drag this up to 9 right there. And it doesn't matter what this picture looks like, because we're not trying to make it look good yet. Um, because, trust me, it will look good. And now we're going to click Tools again. My brain... Um, and now drag on warm cool. Now this is what you can use to fix this. So let's say you filmed it and it ended up looking like this and the red levels are way above everything else. This is where you can take the warm cool and adjust it and say whoop, we need those all to be even. So no matter how it makes the picture look, you want to make all of the levels even, okay? But I don't really even need this effect right now because, you know, they're already perfectly even, so I'm just going to delete it. Um, and I'm going to take Colorista, Colorista, whatever, however you say that, drag that on. And now this is the brightness of the brights. Undo that. And then this is the darkness of the darks. And then these are just the midtones. Um, now, I used to think this was really complicated back when I was just doing normal in After Effects 
color correction, you know, without any special plugins. Uh, but then I realized, you know, this is actually, even though it seems complicated, it's actually really, really simple. So what we're going to do here, uh, you see here we got the 9. We're going to take the brights, drag them up until they get to 1, exactly. There we go. And if you have a hard time seeing, you can also just look at the RGB uh, graph. There we go. Just make sure it doesn't go above, because you see that's when you start to blow out even more of the picture, which is not what we want. We want to keep all the detail. So right about there looks good. And then with the shadows, uh, again, this was, this is the one it's really hard to see on the lightness graph, so I recommend looking on the RGB graph. And we're just going to take that down to about there, just as soon as the they touch. Sometimes, you know, you can bring it a little bit more, but then you're going to lose detail in the darks. So something like that. Now... As you notice, uh, we can hit this button to turn all of the effects off. It's already looking a little bit better, darker, but a little bit better. Um, and so we're going to adjust uh, just the overall brightness, because, you know, sometimes this makes it look like that, and you can't see anything. So we're going to adjust this. This is the midtones, and we're going to adjust these so that there's, you know, it looks how we want it to. Um, just drag it up and down until you find something that makes you happy. So I think just about like that looks good. So now I'm going to turn these off so you can see, and on makes it look a little bit better. Um, and now we're going to color correct it. So this was supposed to be sort of a, uh, I know it's my little brother, and it looks kind of stupid because he's not like, he's supposed to be like a thug or a bank robber or something, but anyway, uh, it's supposed to be like an exciting type thingy. So I'm going to go for bluish, greenish, creepy, exciting tones, like I, you know, taught in my horror color correction tutorial. Um, only this is a bit more of an advanced tutorial. So... Let's see, um, we are going to start, I guess, with the mid-tones. I think you could start with, really, with any of these. And uh, drag this here. Now, notice this. This is the saturation, so how much of the color, you know, all the way up looks rotten. But let's just start, let's just set it somewhere around here. And then this is sort of what color, you know, so we can just swirl that all around. So I'm going to find what color I want. So let's see, we could go with this kind of color. Because, you know, these are usually happier colors, but we want this to be more, like, intense. So we could go with um, something over here, something over here. Actually, this is that looks kind of nice. Something that's too blue. Something like that looks kind of nice, I think. Uh, and then you can play with the, you know, strength of it. So I think something like that looks nice. Now, again, let me show you the difference. Nothing, and then color correction. So that's making a big difference. Um, and then we want to set the highlights and the shadows. So, usually you want them to be completely opposite. So, for example, let's take the highlights and bring them and make them yellow, just to show you. So if we make the highlights yellow, like this, uh, and obviously we're not going to have that set there, then we're going to want the shadows to be down here and be blue. Because if we put them in the same place, it's going to look kind of lousy. Uh, so, let me see, I'm not sure actually if I'm going to do that, let me undo that, undo, there we go. Okay, so the highlights, let's swirl this and find a good one. That looks pretty good, okay, so now let's see. How much do you want, let's say something like that, and we'll probably turn it down later. And then for the shadows, let's see, we're going to go for like right here, so... Click there, and you can uh, swirl it a bit if you want to see proof what I'm saying. Put it up here. It's gonna look not that good. Doesn't look that good. It looks best right about something like that. So let me show you. Turn this off. Back on. You can see what a difference it's making. Um, this is seeming maybe a bit strong. Turn it down a bit, maybe. Just a hair, and then let's see this. That's still too strong, so put it something like that. And this, the shadows. Mm. Something like that. Alright. So that looks pretty good. Um that's that's good for just the basic color stuff. Now let me double check here and make sure there's nothing I'm forgetting that I wanted to add. Um oh. This is not related, but it looks kind of cool, just to show you. Boom, your video is now 3D. <laughs> I don't think that's really how they do it, but... <laughs> looks like it. Uh, Alright, so that's everything there, so now we're going to click Matte, and...
and check if there's anything here. Oh, oh, this one is fun. Um, I guess I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll show you the star filter in a bit. Um, Alright, so this is something that I like to add on to like all my videos, uh, vignette. And let me zoom out a bit here so we can see. Um, we don't want that fading over the whole picture, so let's take that out a bit. Do, 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 and push it in, push that in, push this down, pull that up. All right, and now turn this, mess with the strength. Yeah, I guess we could just change that. This is sort of my, you can just sort of mess with it to get something that you like. looking too sharp for me. Alright, so there's with it without, and er, there we go. That's without it, and that's, let me see, that's with it, that's without it. It's just sort of a little nice touch. It's actually, it doesn't look like it's making a huge difference right here. But it often can. And this whole thing's looking too yellow. I'm going to take some of that out. There we go. Okay. That's a little bit better. Uh, and then we're going to go back here and drag on edge softness. Right here. And now this is great for focusing attention. Now, sometimes when you're filming something, you have distracting stuff over here like a, you know, cluttery blah, blah, blah. Um, and you want them to say, no, don't look at how messy my house is. Look at this dude. Boom. Now, that's not, that's not it, obviously. But, um, it, it does, I'm sure you can tell, sort of focus the attention. Now, you want to make it softer, uh, so that people don't notice it. So we're going to turn up the quality. And turn that down. Drag this in. Zoom out. Drag that down a bit. Yeah, it's too blurry and it's not coming in enough. And also, I think maybe this should actually have been more circular. It might look good. There we go. Okay, and we're going to take the blur size down to like, what, 1.5-ish? Alright, now look at it. That's with it on. And then that's with it off. So on, look at the edges. Off. Might actually want to make it a little bit stronger. Make it really strong so we can see what we're doing. Alright, well, it's a little bit subtle. Again, it's not showing up quite as nicely as I was hoping. Um... But it does make it look a little bit nicer, so yeah, I still recommend doing that. And camera, post. Uh, something nice that you can do is the print bleach bypass. It doesn't work for everything, but sometimes it does. It just sort of makes things look a little bit more silvery, I guess? I don't know. Um, it just messes with your lights a bit, so you have to try to make it work. Zero. So what I like to do, I usually set it like 25. And then, now, it makes the whole thing darker, as you can see. There, see? So, the trick is to get it right where it can sometimes enhance it, but not darken it. So, yeah, that's about the difference that it makes with it on and with it off. This, I think it still needs to be a little bit greener or bluer or whatever, so I'm going to come here and let's mess with the warm cool, drag that on, and instead of using it to correct this, let's just mess with it to make it look good. Let's see, could make it a bit cooler, something like that. And you can mess with the tint. It's kind of hard because this is so, you know, to make a tutorial long because this is so objective. Um, Alright, let's see the difference that made. Off. On. 
That makes it bluer and stuff. I like that. Um, also, let's see. What else can we add? Um, if you want to see that little star filter thing I was telling you about, drag that on. And you don't necessarily want to use it, um, but it can make some shots look just slightly nicer. I like to take the size down really small so that people don't even really notice you're doing it and turn the boost down. Come on. Zero. How hard is it to say slide the thing to zero? Zero. There we go. All right. And size. Yeah, because that's a little bit too obvious. That's less obvious, but it just looks kind of cool. Um, make it down to two. Uh, all right. That's pretty good looking. Now let me show you the difference. Off. And then on. It's kind of neat. It might be a bit extreme. You could turn it down again. One. But I think it... Let's see. Yeah, I think it adds a little bit. So I'm going to leave that on. Just kind of looks good. Let me get back to 1.5. 0. 1. 0.5. 0. 0.5. There we go. I like it. Uh, and then also you can, like, change the threshold of what it does it to. And, yeah, I just think it makes it look a little bit more fun. Uh, and let me see, let me see, what else, what else? Obviously you can mess with the saturation. You can take it down a little bit if you want. Or not, because I don't think this one really needs the saturation taken out. I think it looks good. Um, being colorful and pretty, right? So we will get rid of that. And I'm gonna say that's pretty good. Alright, I hope this video helped you out. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up because, I mean, I just showed you how to get from that to that. I mean, the least you can do is give me a like to thank me. Uh, plus it'll help the video get more views, which will help more people see it, which will help, uh, people more. And that's good. So, yes. Also, I'm giving away free pre-keyed video effects, so if you just go to one of the videos on my channel that says, you know, pre-keyed something or other, and it'll look like it's on a green screen or something like that, uh, just click it and then click the link in the description. You can download the pre-keyed version for free. Free. Uh, and it will just be another link to Mediafire. And, uh, yeah. They're great because you can just drag them onto your footage and you don't even have to key out a background or anything. They're just... They're wonderful. So, yeah, if you want to take advantage of that and download some, then go ahead. I'm going to stop filming this tutorial now because I've been filming it for, like, an hour or two. Um, just because I keep messing up so much and saying stupid things. Alright, I'm gonna go. Bye!